In today's video, we're going to show you how to hit more reliable, straighter and much more accurate iron shots. So everyone, we made this video for our instructional channel, Get Good at Golf. So if you want to get good at golf and do just that, make sure you go and check out the channel. I have linked it in the description below. But this video blew my mind as soon as we filmed it, so I had to show it you here on my main channel at Get Good at Golf or James Robinson Golf. But check out Get Good at Golf if you want to get good at golf without actually swinging any faster. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson. Welcome back to Get Good at Golf. Do you want to eradicate shots like this? Okay, I've struck that pretty well. It's just at the right hand side. I've hit an A time from 150. Oh, it's a club short. I mean, I even took a really nice divot there. So what on earth have I done wrong? Because all the YouTube I watch and all my golf instructors always say, right, as long as you take a nice divot after the ball, then you've compressed the ball. You're going to get the distance you want. You've got the dynamic loft properly and you're going to attack it properly. But it's not gone how far I want it to. Do I have to swing faster? A lot of people would think, yes, I have to swing faster. I need to impart more club head speed in there. Therefore, I need to move myself quicker. Wrong. You don't need to move yourself quicker. You need to move yourself more athletically. You need to move yourself in a better sequence. So in order to do that, I need to make sure I take the club away properly. You'll see in that first overlay of the swing that Chris is going to do now, that I actually just had more of a one piece takeaway here. So my whole body moved back there. So if I'm at the top of the backswing there, you might think, oh, actually that club looks okay at the top of the backswing. Yeah, that's good, James. I'm sure you can then move down into the ball and you can get that forward shaft lean, less dynamic loft, bada bada bada, ball goes towards the flag. But unfortunately, because I've had such an unathletic, such a poor sequence takeaway, from here you'll hear that my voice is just exactly the same. I could talk to you all day long if I wanted, I could stand and have a conversation with you. If you're like this at the top of the backswing, you need to change it up. So you need to make sure that as you take the club away, it's separated upper and lower body. This is kinematic sequencing we're talking about. It's not as scientific as it sounds. All we're going to do is make sure the upper body moves first. So you set the club in the position you want to get. Then we start to get a little bit of a weight transfer and we get the lower body moving as the upper body continues to move. So from there, you'll hear my voice. I keep having to take a breath. Voice goes a little bit kind of higher pitched because I've actually moved around my body. I've actually coiled up like a spring. What happens when a spring coils, Chris? It uncoils. Yes. I've put him on the spot there, but you got it in the end. It has to uncoil. So if I then do this in the backswing, a really good kind of drill that Chris can talk us through more is having more of a separated backswing. And you'll see now if I do this is a ball flight. That ball's gone a lot higher. Again, it's towards the flag. And miraculously, this time, that is towards the flag. It's actually in the middle of the green if Chris wants to zoom in there. So you can see that I've hit a much better golf shot. The divot's exactly the same. The divot's a nice shallow divot. I've not changed too much through impact. I've just made sure that I can actually hit a more stable golf shot, a more reliable golf shot, because if I do that every time, I know that this A-time should go around 155 to 160 yards. If I don't do that every time and my takeaway sometimes changes, it means that my downswing is going to change, the sequencing is going to be off. This A-time could go anywhere from 120 yards to 160 yards. And that's where if you can't rely on a distance with an iron, you're really going to struggle to get down and actually attack flags. So again, as I get to the top of my backswing, guess what happened to that sequence, guys? You'll see that again, my voice had to change pitch there because I've actually rotated up correctly. But as I get to the top of the backswing, the sequence reverses. So I start to move the lower body first, then my torso starts to move, then my chest, then my arms, then the handle of the club, and then finally the club head. And you'll see that my hips have rotated around. So they're starting to face towards the target. The shaft is leaning forwards, so I've de-lofted the club, as we mentioned right at the start of the video. But because I've done that all in the correct sequence, so we've gone upper body, lower body, lower body, upper body. Really good way of thinking about that, and a really good Say way of just... a few times, James. Upper body, lower body, lower body, upper body, upper body, lower body, lower body, upper body. There we go. When you flew it in Korean, Chris, you can pretty much say what you want. Anu asayo, tukichin asayo, tam samida. Guys, comment below what does that mean. That is actually Korean as well. But... Can I repeat that time after time? You can see there, exactly the same shot. That should just be right-hand side of the green, exactly the same distance. 
shock horror, it's flag high up the right hand side of the green. Guys, Chris is now going to throw a couple of drills at us to really help you. He's going to throw them at you. Drill for you, drill for you, drill for you. Smash that subscribe button if you want to get good at golf and throw a like on this video. So guys, always great points there from James, but yes, we do need some drills and we need to figure out what we are doing wrong. So it's one of the biggest things we see if you're a slicer of the golf ball is exactly the move that James made there. A big, as we call, a block turn. So everything moves together, everything moves behind here. The club sometimes gets across the line, but then obviously you want to hit at the ball. So the upper body then gets ahead of the lower body and we all know what happens. We start to lean back, club face stays wide open and it goes to the right, and it's a very much a glancing blow, so very weak, no kind of compression, and we don't know where it comes from because we do everything else. We do, we, well, we think we have, we're like, oh yeah, I need to work on my sequence. So again, I get it set there, yeah, that's matching my backswing, but again, hips and chest have all gone together, and from that, yeah, I load up, yeah, that's great, but then we can't get that sequence going at all. So we need to think of a nice, easy drill for you to, identify whether you are going away with a block turn are you somebody who is doing that and if i do have a block turn you'll start to see that i will drag that ball a long way inside on the way back so you'll see that's worked in and we know with this drill yes the ball should work in because if i make a normal goal swing and i make a normal move away that club is going to work on an arc so that is going to arc around but it's going to be a lot more neutral it shouldn't come way inside so if I can do that, I can get that ball back in there straight behind the club and we can just practice that. Okay, just take it away with my body. You see straight away, that stays much straighter on that line. It doesn't go as far because I'm not dragging that club inside. I'm not getting the club out of position to start with. And we know once we get that club out of position at the start, it's very hard to get that back into a position without manipulating it. If we start to manipulate it, we know we can open up the right-hand side of the golf course, we know we can open up the left-hand side of the golf course, and mainly the area we can't open up is the green. You see James, his dispersion came in to around about 10 yards, so he's got one just to the right of the flag, one just to the left of the flag, and those are great chances for him to get out of this par five, if that's his third shot, or even his second shot. Oof. He's in there for a Steven Seagal on screen now, or a birdie so he's making golf easy instead of making it hard so you can go on a driving range do this nicely and start to get used to that and start to hit drills doing this and once you're on the golf course one big thing that you can do is just maybe have if i've not got that ball in there is just before you hit your golf shots let's give you something to get you into that kind of movement pattern so let's just make some motions where okay take it away once and then you're in and then we quickly get over that golf ball and hit because we know if you do a practice swing, you normally keep the feel for around about eight seconds. So if we can do it just before you hit, yeah, that's good. And then get in and over the ball and hit that quickly. We're gonna keep that feel. That's gonna help you improve your takeaway. That's gonna help you load better. And that's gonna help you not have to try and swing harder to get the ball to go further. So on the driving range, we can nicely have this routine of we get that golf ball just set behind. And what I'm going to do there now is get into my setup. I'm going to make this swing. You'll see a nice little divot there. Launch nice and low, straight towards the green. And that, if James zooms in, is just a little bit closer than Oh, here. no! Thank you very much. That's what we're here for. So, now I've done that, you can see I still get my normal distance. I'm getting a good feeling, getting my backswing in a good position. That was nice and straight, no deviation, so there's no curvature, and it launched nice and low because I compressed that ball. Then after that, what we can do is just go, right, now I'm going to go the next ball on the driving range. I can go, okay, I'm just going to do that little takeaway before I come in, get set, take away. Yep, that's good. And then in and hit another shot, and again a nice little divot there, that is going towards the hole, just a little bit short, so perfectly on line towards my target, and that's what we want to do, if I can get that on target, I'm going to get there, that was a little bit clean, because we know we're focusing on a drill there, but we can get our dispersion better, we can get it compressed more, we can hit more greens, and we can help you get good at golf.